que existía una onda que ningún científico, los científicos decían... De igual forma, eh, tienen más o menos 20 patentes en el mercado, todo desde Singapur, los tigres asiáticos. Entonces, es, eh, bueno, mientras arranca, la, arranca el, el computador, espero que entonces disfruten mucho esta presentación. Realmente, eh, además de que Shu es un espectacular ser humano, es pues, muy, muy agradable hablar con él. Entonces, espero que disfruten todo el tema. Bueno, mientras todo, bueno, todavía seguimos arrancando. Ok, entonces, mientras tanto, les cuento un par de cosas adicionales. En eh, el, el cierre, vamos a tener actividades de cierre. Están desde las 2 de la tarde en la carpa del colegio del colegio, del colegio del nuevo gimnasio, donde está la carpa. Estamos con actividades de cierre que arrancan desde las 2 y 3 de la tarde hasta más o menos 6 o 7 de la noche. Entonces, todos están cordialmente invitados a asistir. Eh, recuerden este espacio eh, organizado por Bogodep, el, eh, Bogodep que se, eh, ha sido digamos, el, el curador de, los, de todos los contenidos de ese espacio. Igualmente recuerden eh, tuitear ¿no? eh, nuestro hashtag es col30, eh, col30 software o col30 web para relacionar todo lo que está pasando en este espacio. Eh, listo, ¿qué más les puedo contar mientras tanto? Bueno, nos... Dime. Dime. Sí. Todas las, todas las presentaciones eh, van a estar... Bueno, ahora, de hecho, en este momento todo está transmitiéndose por streaming en vivo y van a quedar disponibles dentro del el sitio web del Colombia 3.0. Entonces vamos a, a, pues para que queden disponibles en el, en el tema. En algunos casos los PDFs y los PPTs los vamos a solicitar también para que pueden, pueden que, pues que, que queden fácilmente accesibles. O sea, van a quedar en Colombia 3.0 y en el sitio de Bogotá. Sí, ¿Listo? ¿Alguna pregunta más adicional con respecto a las conferencias, al espacio? Una pregunta, sí, dime. El, el concurso del SENA, no, en el momento no tengo información del tema, pero si me das unos minutos te consigo información de cómo funciona el tema del concurso del SENA. Bueno, bueno, ¿qué más les cuento? Ya vamos casi por 9.000 espectadores que han pasado en estos tres días de presentación, más de 20.000 personas en streaming y estamos listos para arrancar con Shu. Por favor, un aplauso para Shu, fuerte, bien. Viajó 30 horas en avión para llegar acá, muchachos. Entonces es muy comprometido. Sí. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all the young men and the young ladies here. <coughs> well, um, thank you for your time to share with me some of this innovation experience that we have gone through. Young people like you, innovation is always very tempting. And it is always a guru's subject that one should innovate. No doubt about it, this is correct. But what I'm trying to share with you, it is I was young, once very young, and I was once trying to do a lot of innovation work. At the end of it, there were many, many, many failures. All these failures, give you and make you a better person. Yeah? So all these things here is to tell you what I have gone through in the past. And if you, have, if you are going to do something new, don't repeat the same mistake which I have gone through. All right. <clears throat> First of all, if we are talking about innovations. Now, innovation is nothing fancy at all. Innovations since the day when there's human being on earth, innovation started. The early men were to innovate, to polish the stone, such that they can cut the animals, they can eat the animal. So even animals 
knows how to innovate to catch their prey. So all this innovation is part of our life. It's not something special. It is something that whether you are aware of it or you are just not aware of it, that's all. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> generations like us, we born in the 50s and we have gone through the telecommunications from cable to telex machine, which we have not heard of at all, then come to fax machine, then come into the today all this email and so on. We see a lot, a lot of these changes. We enjoyed seeing the changes, but all these changes can happen because there were innovations all the way. There were innovations all the way. Now, all these innovations, why they are there is because there is a driving force behind it. There's a driving force. As far as animal is concerned, the innovation is about whether you live or you die. But as far as we are concerned, it may not be that serious, but it is about how well can we survive in this world. Money is always an innovation's driving force behind it. You want to make more money, you have to think of ways to make more money. If you don't want to think of how to make more money, then chances are you will not make at all. So, if you have an ambition to be a millionaire, all the time in your mind is just thinking about how to make a million, how to make a million dollars, how to make a million dollars, and you will come because you keep on thinking, generating ideas, how to make it. Yep. So innovations, remember, you need a motivation. That motivation, you have to be clear to yourself. What do you really want? You want a million dollars? Or what else do you want? If you want to chase after your girlfriend, you've got to be innovative to find a way such that she will come to you. That is innovation. The driving force behind it is different. So identify your motivation behind first. And all that, all the time, make sure it is in your mind, then you will go. Now, be very careful here. The motivation behind it, just now I mentioned, I'm saying that millionaire, millionaire, and so on. <clears throat> there are thousand and one ways to make a million dollars. Easy. But be careful. There are bad ways to make a million dollars. There are good ways to make a million dollars. So you make sure it is a responsible way to make your million dollars without hurting others as much as you can. All right. In general, what I'm trying to say, you got to have a conscience in your mind. Whatever thing that you do in your innovations, make sure it benefits the mankind. That is a very, very basic, I have to tell you, because if you don't believe in this, at a time when you're about to go into the coffin, you will realize that statement is correct. Right. Another thing, years ago when I started a new business, I have a good idea. I thought that idea, a good idea, is innovation. Now, if you want to make your innovations into a business, that idea is just the beginning. It's just the beginning only. It is you will probably only touch less than 10% of what is required for you to do. Another 90% of it may not be 100% innovations, but if you don't go through those process, if you cannot pass the test during those process, you will fail. I'm trying to emphasize here, innovation is a process. It is not just about an idea. Yeah? You have an idea, put it into work, you have to put it through tests. Most important, people must accept your idea, your innovations. You think it is innovative, not necessary to the rest. Until the time you can be the world top or second, that process can be quite long, can be quite long. Don't think that it is going to happen overnight. Obviously, I did not or I do not have an IT background. The business that I'm in is not IT. 
for our industries in the, gen uh, in the engineering in the industries from an idea until the point your product can really be accepted in a market, you take anything between 10 to 30 years. You are young men, you start your innovation now, until the time your product is accepted in the market, you are old already. IT world can be very different. It can be very fast. How fast? You will have to judge. Because that timing is very critical as far as your success in your innovation work is concerned. One simple thing remember here. Your estimation of timing is very, very critical. If you want to start something new, touch your pocket, how much money do you have in your pocket first? If your product, you start your idea doing it now until the point people can accept and buy it from a market, how long will you take? Five months, six months, one year, two years? You have to have a good judgment in it. And make sure your pocket has enough money to carry you through. Be very careful about it because you don't have enough money, halfway through, you are gone case. You go to the bank, the bank will show you out. The bank will not support you, I can tell you that first. You have to support yourself at the beginning stage. All right. <clears throat> Next thing is just to make you have a clearer concept between the difference of innovations and R&D, research and development and innovation. A lot of people think research is innovation. Wrong. Innovation is not research. The university professor doing his research work keep on searching and searching and searching. Not necessarily innovation. Innovation is different. It's about how creative you are, how well you can use ideas. Not necessarily you have to go through search and search, not necessary. But <clears throat> innovations do not tie with your qualification. In our company, we have 50 over researchers. You find those who are really performing well as an innovation engineer. Their qualification usually are lower than those we have in the company, the PhDs, and the rest very, very well qualified people academically. But when you come to innovations, you'll be very surprised. Some of them, the qualification is not there, but they are very, very innovative. Next thing we have to ask ourselves, is innovation got to do with being gifted or it can be trained? I personally believe innovation is similar to arts, similar to music. Somebody who is very talented in music, if he is given a little bit of training, he flies. It is in the brain that function, I do not know which part, right? Same thing with innovation. There are people who are always very creative, and all you need to do is just give him some basic thing, either the knowledge of the basic subject, straight away will trigger his whole chain of reaction and come up with a lot, a lot of this innovative thing to come out. So, President Obama spent a million, hundred million dollars on this program to map your brain. What it means is, if you have a company, you want to employ good innovator. Academically, academically want to qualify, you can look at his certificate, easy. But whether the person is innovative at the stage of interview is going to be difficult. So if President Obama project works, what it means is you can look at this guy in the Samsung lab, you put this gadget on, the sensor on his head, and you, tr you give him a questions on the innovation. And if that part of the brain starts working, well, you know that part is the one responsible for your innovative mind. If that is possible, all you need to do, there is a business opportunity. You will have to have a program such that 
the way that you gave that triggering that question, you will see that part of the brain start enlarging. And whether that will enlarge, that will mean something trainable. But if that thing is not enlarging, likely innovation is gifted. But from the experience that we have in our company, I would believe that gifted is good. If you give them training, by way of training is you don't give them answer. Ask them to give you the solution first. From there, you will know. Gradually, you train them that way. Then they will develop. They will develop. Yep. All right. Innovations has also got to do with your educational background, your upbringing in the society. The whole strange of people that you are in networking with will affect your innovations capability. I give you this example here. What is happening in the West and what is happening in the East? My father's generations from China, the first thing that come to their mind when they wake up is whether the stomach is going to be filled for the day. They are talking about whether they were hungry for the day, they were starved for the day. So, those days, you give Chinese one dog, instead of become the pet, they will know how to find a creative way to slice it, to eat it up. Then, you will distribute one piece of meat for the whole family, if you have the piece of meat. Same thing, you see monkeys, you see rats, you come up with very nice, beautiful Chinese dishes. You can say it's the innovative cuisine, but because of the background, because of the circumstances, the way that is being creative is going the other way around. But you look at the West, if you give them the mouse, they will think of Mickey Mouse. You give them dark, they think of Donald Duck. Now, it is a different upbringing. We have that kind of thing. What I mean is, if you are the educationalist, be careful. The way that you teach, the way they're going to bring up the kids, you're going to affect them in the future as far as the innovative mind is concerned. This is another classic example. In China, in China history, the Chinese is very much influenced by the teaching of Confucius. What did Confucius say? Young man, whatever your father say, never be wrong. You have to listen to him. In the family, the father is the king. Never object to what your father told you. Yeah? In the West, in the family, the son will probably call the father by name. In the Chinese family, no way. You get kicked out from the family. Lincoln, President Lincoln. He talk about freedom of speech, he talk about human rights. Whatever you want, you want to talk about it, let it go. Let people know about it. That brings up a form of creativity. I do not know what is in the Colombia here, but this is in the United States, a classroom. This is in Japan. It's very much following this teaching. The students in the classroom. You see the difference. If this classroom will go into the Japan society or in the Chinese society, you have a lot of marks to be deducted. Just simply because you sit this way? Now, is it good or is it bad? I can tell you, if you want to have a creative mind, don't listen to what your teacher told you, not necessarily correct. Your teacher wants you to answer according to the answer he wants you to do. Just like the textbook answer, that you expect you to repeat the textbook answer. But the correct way, no. You have to give your own answer, the way that you think it is right. Yep. In the East, this is the typical way of teaching. If you are the educationalist in Colombia, if you are thinking of creating a more creative society, 
more innovative people, I would suggest you go for a freer environment for the student. Let them grow their, intellect, uh, their creative mind. The Eastern one is very good if you want to have a good team of production worker. Manufacturing, world factory in China. Why? Because of discipline. Soldier, you want to fight a war? You need very obedient soldier in the old days. Nowadays, talking about weapon, how good it is. In the old days, how obedient is your soldier? That will produce a good soldier. All right. <clears throat> Having said that, that was how a person bringing up could influence his innovative thoughts. The next thing is, if you are doing the innovation work, very basic thing, no alternative. You got to be very sound in that particular subject that you are doing. Basic knowledge you must have. There is no such thing as without knowing that subject, you can create something new for that subject. No way. If you ask me to crack out something new for IT, I can tell you, no way. Though I have a lot of patents, a lot of new things I've done in other industries. I even have the difficulty to hook up myself onto the internet. I don't even know what is my IP address. So all that basic, if you want to be a creative person in that subject, you've got to have that know-how. If you do not have that know-how, how can you create? So no way the basic subject, the skill must be there. There is no other alternative. Yep. So you want to do a good IT job, 3D animations and all, all these things, please, your basic technical skill must be there. Must be there. <clears throat> Next thing, when you do your innovation work, when we are young, we have about a thousand and one things in our mind. You know? And we always act on impulse. I like to do this, Stop, I go. Be careful. If you are going to turn it into a business, then that subject or that particular idea that you have, it must be, it must be market oriented. Must be market oriented, not about whether you think it is good or bad. It's what the market wants, not what you want. If you insist on what you want, you can go, but be prepared to suffer. That's all. You may still reach the end, but it's going to take you a long time and you've got to spend a lot of money. A basic thing in marketing, this thing you should, you should pick it up. What is good to have, what it should have, and what is must have. If you want to do a completely new subject, new innovation work, and that is not a must-have thing, your acceptance is going to be slow. Your acceptance is going to be slow. So make sure you have enough money in your pocket to sustain that period of time until your product is accepted by the people. Again and again and again, I want to repeat this part, financial resources. Do any new business, make sure you have enough financial resources. Always have a plan B. What if I fail? What is my plan B? So, if you have a skill in hand, you don't have to worry. If I fail this business, I can work for somebody again, no worry, I will start again. But you always have a plan B. If you don't have the plan B, you are, you are, psychologically, you cannot take it. Now remember, the second thing it is if you want to be a good innovator, you must have one basic expectation. Expect to fail. Expect to fail, not expect to succeed. To expect to fail first. When you fail, you can stand up again and you will start again. Never die. Remember, your innovation work must always be easy to the user, not you. If you are IT man, 
a lot of terms, a lot of all this jargon. It's simple because it is day in, day out that you're handling it. But if your user are not going to be an IT person, you have to make sure you understand what they can understand. What you understand, not necessarily what they can understand. And to them, it becomes a burden to use your innovation, then you will have problem. So you make sure your innovation is user oriented. Is user oriented. This is something a common mistake, not about IT, about any specialized subject. An engineer would take for granted kilonewton as something as a force. He thinks that everybody knows kilonewton. But a lot of people don't understand what a kilonewton means. I went to one convention, a PhD uh, guy who delivered a subject about chemistry. He used the term one mole, M-O-L-E. Now, one mole to a chemist is nothing. It's just a common subject, nothing. But the audience, I can see out of the 200 over audience, 99% of them doesn't understand what is an M-O-L-E, the mouth all open. But the professor finds that it's so strange why these people don't understand. That kind of people cannot be an innovator. Remember, you have to understand what your user understand. Then you can have a good innovation. All right, next thing, when you do your innovation work, <coughs> Always remember, when it is a subject given to you, something you want to do, always ask why and why and why and why, not how. Always ask why first. If you only when you know why, then you have a string of subsequent questions of how to do it if I want to solve this problem. You are given a problem to solve, find out what is causing why there is a problem. That problem, where does it start, start from? From there, then you can find out your how to solve it. If you don't ask the question why, you cannot come out with the good how. This is basic again. If you are given the picture, the dog, right at the top, that, uh, the, the top right corner here, you look at that dog, is it pitiful? Or why you feel deep pitiful? That question, why? Is because tears is coming out from the eye? Or is the eye the round that make you feel that it is pitiful? Now, if you can ask all this why, later on when you do your work, you know if you want to make the somebody have the feeling of being pitiful, just add two drops of tears there. Then it works. So I always ask the question, why first? Yeah, from there they can dig out a lot of things. All right, next thing when you do your innovation, <clears throat> be careful. If your innovation, you want it to be accepted by people, make sure you put feeling into innovation. Whether you are working on it, you got to have the feeling, you got to have the passion. Now, all these things, all these 3D animations, even the kids look at some, uh, going through all this movie, the 3D animation, some of them cry. The Lion King, they cry. Why they cry? Why they are moved by the movie? If you can catch that fire, why? Then you can design better movie. Same thing. I watch this panda uh, kung fu. I never watch this thing because of this talk. I go and watch the panda movie. Yeah. When I look at the panda movie, I feel there's something missing. Because the Kung Fu teaching here is not the real Chinese Kung Fu teaching. I don't get moved by them because I don't think it is correct. What I mean is, if you want to do a good 3D movie, you want to in that subject, make sure you understand, you immerse yourself in the subject, then you know what is the correct way to do it. All right? <clears throat> Moving into a new subject, I told you I have 50 over uh, researchers in our place. One common problem that I face is a lot of these 
engineers, researchers, they don't want to step out of their comfort zone. I'm a chemist. I will do my subject in chemistry. You tell me to do something outside chemistry, in the physics, uh, 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 or there are all kinds of excuses. Why? Because they just want to work in within their comfort zone. It is nothing wrong. It's the human common behavior. If you want to be an innovator, you have to step out of your comfort zone. That is one of the very critical things. If you don't step out of your uh, comfort zone, you will fail. Next thing, you make sure your exposure is as large as possible. Our brain is a data bank. How much thing you can put in your brain will determine how large your data bank is going to be. For that, you have to understand the various subjects. I told you about the Kung Fu, uh, Panda Kung Fu uh, uh, 3D thing. It's because the guy does not have enough knowledge in Kung Fu fighting. If you have enough knowledge in Kung Fu fighting, you can create a much better Panda uh, Kung Fu. Yeah? So, Kung Fu is nothing to do with IT, you want to put it that way. But if you really want it good, not only Kung Fu, go, better go to the Shaolin Temple and see how they practice. And I can tell you Shaolin Temple, as far as we are concerned, is just only a small part of the Kung Fu history. All right. If you are given a task to do something new, or you want to do something new, a subject that you have to step out. Be prepared. <clears throat> the actual case, there was this great American architect who designed a big, big, big project in Singapore for a uh, complex, including hotel, shopping center, the whole string of them. <clears throat> At that time, I was 20 over, he was 70 over. Another person commissioned this architect, go and design a discotheque for me. Discotheque. 70 over years old architect, he asked him to design a discotheque. What that old architect did, he spent months in the disco at night. Try to learn how the youngsters Dance, how, why the youngsters like to go to disco. You've got to have all that knowledge in order to build something new. Then that new thing will become attractive to the customers that you want to capture. If you don't do that, the old architect will go and design a disco. You find that that disco, nobody wants to step in. This is something you remember. You want to be in that subject, you better immerse yourself in the subject. Today, you read it, you find it so new, it doesn't make sense to you, don't worry. Next day, read again. See it, feel it again. One day, two days, three days, give your time, even up to months. Automatically, you will have the feel of the subject. Believe me, if you have no Kung Fu basics, go to China, Shaolin Temple, train for two months, you come out with a different person. All right, <clears throat> next thing is just some of the basic skill if you're learning something new. If you learn something new, you always look for the key points. Don't bother about all the minor details, the key points. When you have that, <clears throat> always do this thing. Repeat and summarize to yourself. What you understand, you repeat to yourself. If that makes sense to you, and you are able to use that to explain to, to the third party again, and if he can understand, it means you have grabs the basic understanding of the subject. Now, as a student, we are always very lazy in summarizing and repeating what we have learned. And you go into the examination hall, because you did not repeat it to yourself, you find that you will fumble in the exam. But if you were to repeat it, before the examination, and it will help you to recall everything, you will score well. Innovation. Innovation is not a matter of split second. Innovation is not you spend hours or weeks to understand it. 
innovation is something it is must be your hello or be your DNA make sure it is your DNA non-stop 24 hours since there are a lot of young men youngster here I have to share this with you I interviews a lot of young men to come to the company some of them they apply for senior positions some of them they apply for more junior positions but one very common thing they ask me how many days leave annual leave do I have I said why do you ask me this question when you come here to apply for a job and you ask me how many days annual leave do I entitled to he said oh I'm talking about life balance work life and work balance do you think there's such a thing as work and life balance be careful today China become the world second largest economy it because the people do not have a balance in life they believe balance in their pocket they don't believe balance in life they believe in their pocket money must be balanced if the pocket money is not balanced you don't talk about balance in life so remember you work you are earning money when you have a leisure time you are spending money it's always the case so you got to make sure you have make enough before you spend it next things <clears throat> I like to talk about it is about what is the right attitude one thing it is very common that you find in the research people in the innovation people you can say it too a lot of people when they see something fail they will look at it at proving it wrong that this is something that you have done wrong that's why it failed if you want to be a good innovator you must always think of how to make it work and always trying to prove why it works not trying to prove why it failed I give you uh, if you go to the marketing course they always give you give you this example a glass that's half filled with water whether you want to consider this half half empty or half full that is about your attitude another example nothing to do with IT this is what we have done in our company crude oil the oil dig out from the underground is very very sticky so you have to heat it up to make it liquid we invent a method we use the electromagnetic wave to make it liquid without heating so when we first try it instead of making the heavy crude oil become liquid the whole thing become a jelly now you have two attitude when you come to here if you are an innovator one is a ah this is a failure another attitude you can look at it great at least the oil responded why you respond oh something is behind it and from there then you can develop the whole string of things that is what we have actually gone through so remember taking a positive attitude in trying to find out why it works is more important to trying to say it doesn't work this point is one of the important thing if you want to be a good innovator <clears throat> remember as I said again never die expect failure but when you have failure stand up again go again be an Iron Man yeah <clears throat> next thing this problem me too people talk about 3d animation everybody will chase for 3d animations why why can't you do 4d what is a 4d so there are a lot of things don't follow if you want to be a good innovator don't follow this is a common problem following 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 in the university what they do is, is they will do the research 
they call it paper review. See what other people have done in the market, which one is the biggest sector, which one's the second biggest, then everybody go for the biggest one. This is a following. This is not innovation. Innovation don't work that way. Never, never follow. Okay, now you are all that basic. Now you start your own business doing innovation thing, right? Now when you do that, <clears throat> you have an idea here, and until you come up with your prototype. When you have the prototype, my friend, this prototype is not the end of your business. It's not, you cannot stop here. In fact, this is the one, come to that point, you are entering a very dangerous zone. You are entering a very dangerous zone because until this point, you only have the prototype, but you have no income. You have no income at all. You still have to spend your own money. So, you still have to move on, continue to go into the market. Remember, I always use the word marketing. I'm trying to put the word market into your innovative mind so that everything you do, think of what the market wants. Think of what the market can accept. From this point, you have the prototype. Until this point, you generate your first sales. All this stage here, from here to here, you have to come out from your own pocket for your money, for your fund business. If you don't have enough, you are here, valley of death. When you have your sales, you will be very happy. I bet you one thing. When you start your own business, the, that very moment you receive your first order is your happiest life, happiest time in your life. Whether it be $500, whether it be $1,000, you will be the happiest person at the time. Now, when you have the sales come in, that sales will pick up. And it will all depend on whether the market is accepting it quickly or slowly. When it's coming up slowly, you got to make sure this graph is going up all the time. Now, it come down, is a bad sign. You got to be very careful about it. Now, Next thing, it is the most important thing, cash flow. Cash flow. Cash flow is your blood. If your blood doesn't circulate in your body, you are dead. Cash is more important than anything. You have a sales, you have a $100 sales. If the cost of doing it is $99, you only have $1 cash that you really generated. If you don't have enough cash, you will still be in the very, very low, perhaps next to death. Be careful. Here, yeah? I repeat again, expectation. Enough money until you have your first sales coming. When you have your first sales, watch out for your profit margin. You have your profit margin, you've got to see whether the margin is enough to sustain your expenses. Be careful about all that thing. Gradually, then you'll be okay. Tell you, bank won't help you. The time when bank help you is only when you don't need them. The time the bank will help you is only when you don't need them. The time you need the bank, the bank don't help you. The bank will only come to you when you don't need their help. Any banker here? All right, <clears throat> now this is some of the actual thing. Now, as I told you, engineering, industrial world are different from IT. This is the thing that the process that we have gone through. Now, all these things you are talking about, 12 years, 10 years, before we can actually have a product launch into the market, and we are still struggling with some of the product to get the people to really accept your item. Now, here you've got to be very careful. If I am going to use a software for my industrial plant. I will be very, very careful. You have a beautiful, genius software for me, but I may not adopt it because even I pay you a million dollars for the software that you are giving me, my plant is in billion dollars, and if your software doesn't work for that few hours, my plant blow up, 
who is going to pay for the billion dollars? The consequence of it is very serious. This is totally different from consumer market. Consumer market, you have $100 in your pocket, if you like it, you just buy it. There's no consequence. In industrials, you talk about consequential losses. And a lot of people don't want to take consequential losses. The engineer in charge then, especially when he's old enough like me, who is about to retire, why should I try new thing? If I try new thing, chances are, if it works, fine. But if it doesn't work, I don't even have my retirement benefits. So you've got to understand the human being behavior. A lot of things are not just about simple innovation. <clears throat> All right, I'm not sure about the Colombian government here, but the Singapore government spent a lot of money in R&D. The people in the, sitting in the council are all the prime ministers and the cabinet ministers and two businessmen and the rest of the foreign advisors. Now here, what I'm trying to say is if there's a government organization wants to have an R&D fund that's set up, it is important that the mix of the members got to be correct, got to be correct. If you want your R&D to result in business, the way should throw more on the businessman because the businessman will look at dollar and cents. If your R&D is making focus on the technical papers for submission, then you've got to have a lot of economics. So the mix of this is critical depending on your objective. Don't select the wrong group of people to judge to award all this project funding. If you are a small, medium-sized enterprise, we call it SME in Singapore, Singapore also have a unit taking care of all this small funding. Because if you need $50,000, $100,000, you will go to this. So this guy will handle hundreds and hundreds of this smaller applications. The bigger one in millions, then you need a group of people who will only award maybe a few times in a year for the projects that we are doing. Our shareholders, as a um, world-renowned uh, shipyard, so what the shipyard is doing is <clears throat> every year they have this innovation carnival and they will give out prizes to anyone, whether you are a rigger, you are a laborer, you are a cleaner, doesn't matter. As long as you can come out with some creative idea to improve your work, you are given a prize. It's a cash reward. So the cash reward, anything from $100 up to $100,000. So this is a form of encouragement so if you have a company that doing all this innovation work, don't forget to reward your staff who has contributed. Now this is very important. Even a $50 reward psychologically means a lot to them. This is human HR matters. But if you are the head of the company, you make sure that is taken care of. The shipyard, <coughs> led by these two uh, uh, persons, the lady is non-engineering people, yet they are the world's second largest rig, oil rig builders. They are the world largest, they call it a natural gas carrier. So all these things, you've got to understand, in Singapore, the labor cost is expensive. So if we want to compete in the whole Asia region, we have to compete by technology. As far as this rig is concerned, it's a world market. The world number one, number two rig builders are all in Singapore. And you will be very surprised how big is Singapore. Singapore is a small diamond-shaped island. From, north, uh, from east to west, all you need, you drive 40 minutes, you complete the whole journey. 
that is the size of the whole Singapore. Yeah? And yet, Singapore has to survive because we have no natural resources. No water, no nothing. We have to buy everything from outside. And yet, you have to survive in the world to make yourself become the world top rig builders, the world biggest port, seaport, the harbour is the world biggest, the refinery is the world number three. So all these things is through nothing except innovation work. All right? As far as our company is concerned, we come up with emission control so that we can reduce the carbon dioxide, the whole string of things which is for the industrial applications. Now, <clears throat> we can, we also produce things but we don't sell it. Your wine, instead of waiting for five to 10 years to age your wine, we do it in 20 minutes. So all these things, people think they're impossible, but you can do it if you want to be a good innovator. And the same for all of us here. You can be a good, successful innovator. Be careful, look out for opportunity, and you go. Don't stop, never die. Thank you. Preguntas? Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I have one question, uh, very quick. Uh, wha um, what do you think is the main part about the atti attitude that you had to have with the um, innovation? Like, um, what, like, what percentage of, of um, positivity, what percentage of study, uh, uh, what do you think is, is the, main, the main part that will trigger the innovation uh, for, uh, according to, you, to your experience? Um, all right. <clears throat> I, I think to answer your, is that uh, the question? Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. Um, <clears throat> the attitude to be an innovator is not about one or two major things. It is always a broad-based thing that you've got to be careful. All this you've got to have together. You can't miss any one of them. But one very simple thing that I would like to emphasize if you want to be a good innovator, remember, you have to treat it, I'm talking about innovation, for a business. You've got to have a very, very good businessman attitude. What is the businessman attitude? You've got to have a very good marketing sense. Start from your marketing part. Understand the marketing, then come to your technical. Don't mix the sequence back out. Normally, as an innovator, we always start from a technical thing, but we forget about the marketing. So put your marketing in front, then your technical to the second part will be, will be the more critical thing for us. Thank you. Of course, uh, prepare the pocket. <laughs> Thank you so much for the talk. I would like to ask, um, well, an entrepreneur has an idea and want to innovate, I want to work hard, but an innovator cannot do it alone. What are the major tricks and tools to keep the team behind it, um, inspired, working, and going through all the steps and through all the major issues, keeping working after failure after failure until you get finally a success? No, the, the thing it is, um, just to share with you what I have actually gone through. Um, I thought two million bucks to start a business should be good enough. So <clears throat> I expect the business took about, will take about two to three years to pick up, which is quite normal from anyone. Uh, the fact it is, it took almost 15 years. <laughs> the point that like you mentioned is 
how to keep yourself survive during this period of time. A few ways to do it. Doing completely new thing without income will certainly hurt you. Not just in terms of financial resources, you will find that the people who are surrounding you, work for you, one by one, will go away. They have to go away because they are not seeing you having any future. So, as a leader, as a leader, <clears throat> very important thing, you work together with them. So they share the same passion as you. Some of them can even come to, uh, come to me, came to me and say, look, forget about the pay for me. Let's do it. Of course, the family, I don't know how he support. When you are able to transfer that passion to your people who are together with you, that can only happen when you have a passion. If you don't have a passion, this thing will never go. You never ask me why can have that passion. It's because that passion comes in because you have the determination. I want to do it. I want to do it. Yeah. Obviously, that is a passive way that you are hoping them to come to go together with you without pay. Negative. What is more positive for you to do is very quickly, as an innovator, you've got to be very quick in changing your position. You've got to change your position. You cannot be so stubborn that I insist that I want to carry on this way of doing. You have to think of alternative way how to survive. At that point of time, getting income is more critical than anything. The income, the way that you bring it in, not necessarily must be an innovative product. You may even provide the conventional service to anyone just to gain some income first to help you to support that business. So with that, then with all this income, not really what you want, but it helps you. Then with that, that is the only way out for you to carry on your business, to let the passion keep on going. Otherwise, you will collapse. Then you have to restart again. Am I answering your question? Yes. Thank Thanks you so much. <clears throat> One moment. My name is Hugo Yamil. Uh, I have uh, the drama, the Mew, the Mew 3D. For my interest in is to, uh, to apps in uh, to us, what is the, the, the moral rentability about the bandits? Uh, so, so, sorry, can you repeat? I, I, what most is a uh, more rentability about the bandits uh, in my, my 3D movie, in application apps, in, movie, in, 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 in mobiles, in mobiles? Uh, mobiles? Le estoy preguntando es que yo estoy haciendo una, una, una novela en 3D y lo que y me interesa llegar y, y volverla como una aplicación apps para poder saber es que, cuál es más rentabilidad y cuál es la mejor rentabilidad si aplicarla en esa forma o colocando comerciales dentro de la novela. Eh, dice. Very, very sorry. I, I... Ah, yes. Sí, porque no me la entendió. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah, My name is Hugo Yamil. I have the enterprise, the movies 3D. Oh, bueno. <laughs> que la hable en español. Ah, bueno. Bueno, mi nombre es Hugo Yamil. Yo tengo una empresa que hace animación en 3D. Pues la idea que yo tengo, Hugo, diseños es crear una novela en la cual yo la pueda aplicar en apps. Eh, yo, no yo no sé, yo quiero ver es cómo sería más rentable esa novela si se pudiera producir en, como una rentabilidad en 3D, en que coloque, por ejemplo, los comerciales dentro de la novela, o sea, dentro del serial, algo así como Rápido y Furioso cuando lo dice la cerveza Corona, o, o colocarlo más bien como un pay-per-view en apps, como un pago por, por ver la novela, que sería mejor rentabilidad en, en, en los móviles. 
Um, all right. No lo entiendo, tranquilos. I'm very sorry. I don't think I can answer your questions. For the very fact is, is I am not in that business. If I were to tell you an answer, that would be a, not a real answer. It would be a wrong answer. So I, I'm very sorry. I'm unable to answer that part of the question for you because I don't understand that business. Neither do I know the difference between a 3D and a, a fixed panel. This is something I... In fact, when you ask me the Fast and Furious, I only watched that once at the at the at the, at the TV uh, movie. That's all. Then, very sorry, I, I can't I can't give you any good advice, and I should not give you advice because chances are this is wrong. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, with all this uh, like technology boom and like all these events going around. Uh, innovation what would you uh, advise like government and event organizers and big businesses not for not to lose the focus on uh, really investing on innovation versus uh, investing in the hot topics uh, in the market like for example right now it's apps but uh, I think innovation is really different uh, when when you talk about it and try to teach it no this is the real point this is the point that we say the me too attitude. When somebody doing something, oh, the whole group will rush for that. As an as a innovator, I am not supporting that kind of idea. So if the government <coughs> wants to support uh, innovations, perhaps it should have a broad category. A broad category meaning that this is IT, meaning this is in engineering, then it can be anything. Otherwise, you will come out with ideas that is completely different from this, but they don't fit in any of this category, then they are brown. So, correctly, the government should not have any restrictions into any prioritized subject they want people to go in. The moment you put in the framework, you should be in that subject, you kill the innovation. So, so for me, government is one party, they're giving me fun to do R&D. I'm the recipient of the, of the R&D side. Many a times, I don't agree with the, our government the way they do it, because exactly the problem is like what you say. I don't fit in any one of these categories but it's something completely new. So, in Singapore, that is one subject, one fund. They call it the National Research Fund. You can submit, it's an, it's an open bid to anyone. You have any idea, you submit. So, they will vet your innovations idea and see how much do you need, and if it's okay, they grant you. So that one has no restriction. The only problem is who will be the people sitting in a panel to judge your submission. That is critical and that is tricky. If your subject, your idea is so wild and so new, making sure this group of people is open-minded enough to accept your idea. If they don't have open mind, you may still have problems. Take it that this is part of the life for innovator. Expect people don't understand what you say. <laughs> but it should not be the reason to kill you. Yeah? You have to find other ways. If you cannot survive by that way, there should be other ways. Thank you. Bueno, eh, bienvenido a Colombia. Yeah. Okay. Bienven eh, bueno, es muy interesante poder aprender de una persona que viene de una cultura tan diferente a la nuestra. Mi pregunta es respecto al fracaso. Porque nosotros acá el fracaso es tomado como algo muy negativo, como algo muy malo. Desde que somos niños, si fracasamos, nos castigan de diferentes formas. Y un innovador tiene que tener esa tolerancia al fracaso. ¿Qué nos recomienda usted? 
para poder mejorar nuestra tolerancia al fracaso y no darnos por vencidos. Fantastic question. <coughs> and and the, the truth is, the truth is, <coughs> to accept tolerance of failure is very much an individual. Very much depend on how the family brought you up. I came from a very poor family. My daddy has no money for me and I don't even have a chance to go to the university because the, company, uh, the family is so poor. Right? <clears throat> But my daddy has given me one thing that he say, do whatever you want as long as you are not hurting somebody. That is what I have repeated, to be responsible. That's it. You fail, you pass, you do well, it doesn't matter. Don't forget, when you are a kid, when the parent tell you something like this, automatically in your mind, failure is nothing. It is a norm of our life. So that become part of the parent's responsibility. This is true my own experience. I, I can tell you, in my career, I have started in total about 16, 16 different businesses. And I failed at least half of them. <laughs> so failure, I think it is very much depending on the family and the parent uh, upbringing of a kid. And, and when he or she is a kid in the school, that idea must be implanted in their mind. That will determine their whole life. So going back, the solution is the parent, the family. When you grow in that environment, when the family brought you up that way, your friends who are going to criticize you, you fail, look down at you, you don't feel anything at all. In fact, you just say, I fail. You feel nothing. Thank you. <coughs> all right. Bueno, muchas gracias. Un aplauso muy fuerte. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.